Good morning. This is the Great Basin Prescribed Fire, Smoke Transport, and Overall Weather Briefing for Wednesday, November 9th. And looking at precipitation the past seven days, a wide swath of moderate to locally heavy precipitation, especially we see the dark greens and yellows. That's a inch to two inches of a precipitation, or I should say liquid equivalent to the percent above normal. Uh, keeping in mind that this does not include the last uh, 24 hours, we look at the past 24 hours here on the left-hand side, you see there was additional moderate to locally heavy precipitation across southern Nevada and uh, going to southern Utah and parts of uh, uh uh, Eastern Idaho, three-day totals with this storm look very impressive, uh, uh, not to say the least. A lot of that has fallen in the form of snow. On the left-hand side, new snowfall the past uh, 72 hours, past three days. You can see these dark reds and browns here. This is, this is 18 to 24 inches uh, and uh, probably another 6 to 12 inches additional across the higher terrain. Uh, especially across uh, Utah and parts of Nevada today on top of this. You can see our snow cover map. A large portion of the northern and central Great Basin has some sort of snow cover, even getting down to southern Utah here. Um, eastern areas in Utah will be getting this storm today, and they'll be expanding their snow cover as well. So definitely a lot of the fuels for prescribed burning uh, looking to be snow cover. Looks like pile burning or lower elevation burns in the brush might be more conducive. So we get through the winter, look at overall snowpack. Keep in mind, it is still early, but uh, it is nice to see above 200% of normal snowpack for just about the entire uh, Great Basin and the West. Definitely good news. Uh, good news for the drought situation, the Colorado River Basin and all basins, actually. Uh, point of con uh, concern today for... Uh, the Salt Lake area in the Great Basin Coordination Center is the possibility of uh, precipitation changing over all snow. We should be mild during the day, but it's this evening and tonight where the driving could be quite tricky. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're traveling later this evening and maybe for the morning rush tomorrow morning. Fuels are taking a hit. These are 100-hour fuels. Uh, these were observed yesterday, uh, these dark greens and lighter greens basically uh, near or above 20%, and this will spread further eastwards. Deep low pressure area, you can see just a deep swath of enhanced moisture all across the Great Basin. Um, maybe a little bit of a donut hole in southern Nevada, but there'll be some pop-up showers there as well. By steady precipitation, cool temperatures. You see that low here on the left-hand side and the deep uh, green with more moderate to locally heavy precipitation expected today, uh, where you see these dark greens wrapping around just about the entire Great Basin. So low is like perfectly centered on the tri-state point here. Uh, we still run the seven-day twice a week. Uh, benign all throughout the green through the seven-day period doesn't really change. On the left, you see the strong winds uh, wrapping around this low in this counterclockwise fashion, 30 to 40 mile per hour winds. Uh, you can see the humidity, how high it is. So just about everybody above 50%, more in the 60 to 80% range for dry humidity. Only driest part here is in parts of eastern Colorado. Uh, good overall mixing, as you expect, of several thousand feet above ground level. The main challenge will be if fuels are too moist to burn. Uh, Thursday, that low starts departing into the upper Midwest. We do get drier, but still cool northwesterly flow. Uh, surface fuels should dry out. Wind flow will be northwesterly for any prescribed burning. See the strongest winds here in the enhanced areas, lighter winds in the pale shape. You can see the humidities uh, starting to dry out a little bit, but drying out is a relative term, still above 50% in most areas. Vertical mixing still good, as you would normally expect with the vicinity of the low. Then we get a weak ridge of high pressure building in on Friday. Dry air master out. Another storm system pushing into the Pacific Northwest. Uh, winds diminishing in many areas. See lighter winds. Daytime humidity still fairly high here on the right-hand side. Uh, mixing heights starting to lower a little bit. Part of it's due to the snow cover. Part of it's due to high pressure building. And so we should start seeing more inversions in many of the valleys as we go towards the end of the week. Uh, additional three days of precipitation. You can see more like mo a light to moderate amounts. The dark greens are about a quarter to a half inch, greater than a half inch in some of these blue shades. You do about a 1 to 15 or 1 to 20 ratio for snowfall. You get another 6 to 12 inches in the mountains. Over the weekend, Saturday, a little low pressure area pushing across uh, parts of northern Nevada. Uh, it drops down uh, south of Vegas into the Arizona Strip on Sunday. We stay seasonably cool. Another week disturbance here deepens maybe a light to locally moderate precipitation event for eastern Nevada, much of northern Utah 
on Monday. Uh, that system moves further south on Tuesday. Uh, looking overall, precipitation days four and five. This is Saturday through Monday. Uh, just light amounts here in, in parts of Nevada and just isolated amounts here. Depending on how that low tracks, these amounts could be locally heavier um, in parts of Utah. We'll see how that plays out. The 8 to 14, the outlook shows the cooler than normal temperatures continuing near normal precipitation for most areas. And this concludes our briefing. Have a great day.